Hey, what's going on? This is Andre Sweeney, the Life Specialist. Welcome to the Get a Life Show, the show that gives you the tools and principles necessary for an outstanding life. Today's segment is called The RIP, Real Interventions for People, and today I need to intervene in your life. Today, I am ripping up the Bishop Eddie Long situation. Listen, I simply want to say a few things about uh, what's going on with Bishop Long. First of all, everybody needs to chill out. Because the bottom line is, none of us know the truth until the truth comes out. You know, we really haven't heard his side of it. We've heard from his accusers. But we don't know what happened. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a judgment. But certainly, one day the truth shall come out. And then we'll know. Until then, everything is speculation. Until then, we're guessing. And until then, we're putting our mouths on a situation that we really don't have the facts about. Bottom line, there's a couple things I'm uncomfortable with with Bishop Eddie Long. Like them tight shirts he be wearing when he's preaching. Bishop Long, that's crazy. Don't no man of God, no preacher need to be wearing a shirt so tight that you can see his heart beating through the shirt. Something's wrong with that. Those little nasty looking pictures you took in the bathroom. A little suspicious, Bishop. But we still don't know. Certainly, have you ever been lied on? I know I have. Have someone ever said something about you and it looked like the truth? I know I've been in that situation. So just because someone's saying something, doesn't mean he did it. And again, until we know, we don't know. Yeah, things don't look good, but let's reserve judgment until we find out. <clears throat> but the point I really want to get to is, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Same really about this. <clears throat> there has been an attack on the body of Christ now for the last four or five years on its leadership. Understand that when you kill the head, the body soon follows. The enemy is attacking our spiritual leadership because he knows if he can affect that, then he can deal a severe blow to the rest of the body. And that's what we're dealing with. We live right now in some horrible times. We're living in the last days. And the world is dying at a record number. The world needs the church. But the church is on life support. The church can't help the world because we're barely breathing. We're barely making it. We can't even stand on our own two feet. And with the world dying, we're of very little help. See, here's the thing. Let's say you were sick. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's say you were about to die. But someone told you that the hospital that you were going to the hospital was messed up. All the doctors were crooks. They were barely trained. The, house wasn't, the, the hospital was infected with all kinds of diseases. Even though you were already sick, would you go to that hospital? Of course not. You better take your chances and make it on your own. As opposed to go there where you're supposed to get healed. And get killed anyway. <laughs> well... That's how a lot of people in the world feel about the church. They're sick, they're dying, but they ain't coming in our buildings to get sicker. They're not coming in our buildings to get shot at. They're not coming in our buildings to be told something and to be told a standard to live upon and they don't see us do it. That's what we're dealing with. The sick people are saying to the church, you're just as sick as we are. And therefore they're rebelling. The church is a, a joke right now to many people. And it's going to take real men of God, real women of God, to bring back the honor of the church and the honor of the preacher. Not just the world, but our own people are suffering. Because they don't trust their leaders. We must do something about this. Here's the bottom line. Our faith is being attacked. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we're trying to do stuff 
with limited faith. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So in order to have faith, you have to hear something. You have to hear the word. But the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? Our preachers are necessary to drive home the faith that we need to believe God. But the enemy is attacking that very mouthpiece that, that transfers that faith to our, to our ears. It wants to make you feel like you can't trust what the preacher is saying. And if you can't believe him, you connect God with that same thing. Understand something, people. Every, every preacher is not gay. <clears throat> every preacher is not cheating on his wife. Every preacher is not stealing the money. Every preacher is not corrupt and money hungry. There are men of God out there who absolutely live what they preach. And they absolutely do what they say. Ultimately, though, if the whole world goes to hell, if every preacher goes to hell tomorrow, you don't have to go. If every preacher is a homosexual, you don't have to be one. If every preacher is robbing the church, you don't have to rob it. The Bible says to work out your own soul salvation. Ultimately, you're going to stand before God by yourself. Not with your pastor, not with the bishop, not with your favorite local evangelist that comes in to prophesy to you once a year. You're going to stand before God for yourself. So don't get tripped up by Eddie Long, Benny Hinn, Rodney Bynum, or anybody. Understand that Jesus is our ultimate example. He says, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus, not your favorite preacher. This is Andre Sweeney, the Life Specialist, and I'm here to help all of my viewers to get a life.